You are welcome again to HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring our Kelly. Real name, Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. While everything has been done by the authorities at all levels to make sure R. Kelly is locked up in prison for the rest of his life, the facts surrounding his case have remained constant, and they clearly exonerate him. The entire court process has been characterized by inconclusive private testimonies, followed by repeated malicious disregard of his attorney's submissions whose claims have been legitimate. Exactly why court officials would choose to bend the laws, all in an effort to see to it that one man R. Kelly is locked up for the rest of his life is something hard to comprehend. The good news however is that in their quest to give R. Kelly a life sentence will not hold, unless the appeal process confirms this. The appellate court judges however are not the corruptible type. They usually take time to understand a situation first, before drawing conclusions and passing judgment on it. The judges who are currently handling his trials have shown that our country is not ready yet, for the next level of social transformation that will see all races as equal in the eyes of an American. The rate at which African American celebrities are being witch hunted is on the rise, all for the wrong reasons. The sexual harassment approach has become the weapon used to take down whoever they feel like dealing with as they may please, to an extent that we can no longer be sure which case presents genuine victims, or which one presents stage managed confessions. I would be wrong to say that it's only black celebrities affected by this. The same weapon has been used even in white takedown missions, the only difference being to what extent exactly they get affected. An example of this is when former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo was forced to resign. The only difference is that while he was robbed of a job, he was not arrested and sentenced to 30 years as Kelly. This is what's being done to our people and it's not fair at all. It's however no surprise that all this is happening in the trial level. Note that whenever you watch a lot of courtroom drama, or situations where an individual is being treated unfairly, in most cases, it's always at trial level. Thinking deeper through this, one may say to themselves, how much more can one expect from a trial with ordinary judges who can always be prone to making huge mistakes, as Lanigan and Lanigan law firm proprietor described them, trial judges are simply ordinary lawyers who along the way, while on the course of their career made the decision to become judges. Remember sometimes they are good lawyers, and sometimes they are not very good lawyers. Sometimes they are experienced lawyers, and other times they are lawyers who have almost no experience at all. There is therefore nothing infallible about a trial judge, and most of them will be open enough to tell you that they are just another lawyer trying to do their job. When it comes to the judges in the appellate court however, these are very experienced personnel with all the credibility one can think of, to analyze and make important decisions on some of the most complex case matters brought at their table. Once the R. Kelly's case is brought to this level of discussion, the appellate judges will be quick to detect certain gaps in the entire trial process. Just like our Kelly's attorney Jennifer Bonjean has put it time and again, there are certain charges that were inappropriately imposed on her client. The RICO charge being number one, which saw the prosecution attempt to craft and concoct stories in the courtroom, circulating pictures and showing them to witness by witness, asking whether they knew Dave McDavid and June Brown so as to create the impression that our Kelly operated a sort of illegal enterprise. They also made sure that the next case in Chicago had the two alleged associates of R. Kelly on the defense. If the associates had been a part of the supposed racket, why were they not implicated in the New York case as well? Is the prosecution suggesting these only have half a case? They probably hoped R. Kelly would do a lot of talking during the New York trial and disregard their interests in the case, so that in Chicago, they come ready to throw him under the bus in a sort of revenge. They were also sure the enterprise supposition would be difficult to fake with all three present to defend themselves. What was not envisaged by the prosecution though is that it is these mistakes that will make the entire case very appealable. There is no way for them to explain why the two people being referred to in the Brooklyn court were not present to answer to the claims against them, and they were instead strategically reserved for the Chicago trial. Besides the RICO charges, Almost every other claim against R. Kelly is in a way questionable. For example, 
there is no way to prove the repeated claims of physical abuse with no backing medical reports and images. Videos and images are all over social media showing R. Kelly out shopping with his girlfriends, on holidays with some. And in certain images, the women are out on the streets driving in one of his supercars, and enjoying a celebrity lifestyle amidst all freedom to escape if they really wanted to. But because the celebrity lifestyle was so much fun, no one left. It was not until most of them realized they were not gaining sustainable wealth from him that they started to blackmail him, and there is evidence to this as well in form of confessions of some of the supposed victims in videos online, stating how they received hundreds of thousands of dollars in hush money. It's difficult to blame someone for paying hush money when they are being blackmailed. But according to the courts handling the case, blackmail is no longer a crime, but giving money to the blackmailer is. How ironic. It's basically clear that if the appeal meets a set of responsible appellate court judges, there will be no other option but to review and drop most of these bogus charges imposed on the R&B king. Whoever is accusing him simply laid their bed, but they are not willing to lie in it. It's no one's fault however that some people decided to waste some precious years of their life living and dining with superstar R. Kelly. We know well that there are many people around the world who idolize their favorite stars and would be willing to offer a few years of their time to being with them. What they however need to keep at the back of their minds is that no one will be to blame for the wasted time. According to James Clay, like Boosie suggests in one of his interviews, the R. Kelly 30-year sentence was way too harsh. Almost like that a murderer would get. Even some murderers don't get 30 years. But there are many people around the country that have done worse things. Look at most rock stars and how they live their lives. Look at Donald Trump and many others. They always want to make a black man the prime example of every bad character. Even if the worst known serial killers and cult leaders have been white. Indeed, if R. Kelly's case goes to appeal, and the case meets with responsible judges, the prosecution has no chance whatsoever. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.